All right, when you're using a spreadsheet, all of the data sits in a grid of columns and rows. And we're going to talk about what happens when you move items around in this grid or when you add columns, delete rows, all of that good stuff. So let's just get started in doing some things that will work just fine the way you hope they would and you really don't run into any problems. This data is arranged like a typical spreadsheet is, right? So this column is all just what the item is called. This column is a number of units. And then each row is a different record under that. So let's decide that we don't want this row five in here, right? The way that you would get rid of this is if you come over and left click on the five here, on the left-hand side of the screen, it will select the entire row. So it's a best practice if possible to do an entire row at a time. So you don't shift just part of a spreadsheet. And if we want to delete this entire row, uh, let's look at the total before we do. So this sum total is all of column E. It's 1,907 now. We'll right click, get the context menu here that comes up and just click on delete row. It just gets rid of it. And the formulas are updated as well. So when you look at the row numbers, there's three, there's four, and there's five, so it still goes in order. There's no missing number. And the data that was underneath the row that we selected and deleted, just shift it up. Now, another important thing to keep in mind is that any formula that moved, adjust it as well. So the formula in E5, this used to say C6 times D6 when it was run one row below, but when you deleted the row above it, it automatically adjusted. So another type of adjustment that happened is if you look at the formula in E6, this range used to be E3 to E6, but when you deleted one of the rows from the middle, it automatically shrank the range. All right, so I'll hit the escape key to get out of there. And what we just did was we deleted a row with no problem, right? Everything adjusted. If I delete a column, that can happen here too, depending on what column we choose to delete. So I'm going to delete column B and I'm choosing this one first because nothing else depends on it. All right, so there are formulas in here, but none of the formulas reference the item. So when I right click and delete column B, everything shifted over and took the place. So column B is still here, but it has different data in it. Now what you need to watch out for when you delete columns and rows is if you delete ones that are involved in formulas. So if I look at this formula, it's taking the values in column B and multiplying them by C. So if you delete column C, let's click on that and choose delete column. Your formulas will just give you errors because it's saying, hey, one of those references that you gave me is gone and I can't do the multiplication anymore because I can't multiply column B times column C because I'm multiplying it times myself, right? So it makes a circular error. And if you have a problem like that, you just left click on undo and it'll be like you never deleted it. If you really want to get rid of this column, what you could do is you could highlight the data in D3 through D5, copy it, right click on it again to paste special and paste it as values. So when you do that and you look in this cell by double clicking on it, there's no formula in here anymore. So the 189.05 is there and when you delete column C, it stays. So you can use this option if you really want to get rid of a formula. But be careful because if you get one more unit, so you change this to 96, the total won't update because it's not a formula anymore. So a better option if I do the undo button and I will well, come up and do it on toolbar or undo it one more time is you can right click on C and you can just choose to hide the column instead. So when you hide it, you see this goes from B to D the formulas still work, but you don't have to look at column C. All right, we'll show column C again. We'll talk a little bit about adding rows and I'll add it in a way that causes a problem. So we will add uh, empty rows into six and seven. That's going to shift the sum formula down to. So I've highlighted these rows. I will right click and I will insert two rows above, which pushes this down. And to give a preview of the issue that's going to happen, if you click in this, the formula is still just referencing down to row five, which isn't going to cause a problem unless you add a row. So let's say we'll uh, come down to seven and we'll just put a, a value in there. It doesn't get included in the sum formula. So when you're adding rows, just be careful, make sure the formulas are still doing what you want. 
And if you have a problem with the ranges, you may have to manually adjust them. So instead of going to D5, you can just make this one go down to D7. All right, we'll delete those right now to get rid of that amount. And we'll move on to uh, the concept of swapping rows. You do same thing with columns, but in this instance, we're going to do it with a row. And let's say we want to move three down below four. So what you need to do is, uh, this won't work if your mouse is in the grid. You need to go over to the numbers or the letters, numbers in this case. And when it turns into a hand like that, click to hold it down. And you'll notice the dark gray line is indicating where this is going to be inserted. We'll just move it down one and it'll swap the two rows. And in this case, nothing else needs to happen. So you do have to be careful though. I notice the link to the web page also moved and I did tell it to move because I grabbed the entire row, but that has to happen if you do the entire row, because if you just do the cells, you get the hand and you drag it down, but it just overwrites the data. It doesn't swap it. That only works when you have an entire row. All right, so I'll undo that. And we'll talk about one last thing, and this is something that you just need to be careful when you do, is that sometimes you want to delete a cell. So there's a difference between deleting the content in a cell and deleting the cell. So if I just wanted to get rid of this 95, if I hit the delete key on my keyboard, it just goes away. The multiplication updates to zero. Maybe that's what you want to do and everything's fine. But if you delete the actual cell, so we will put a number back in there. Let's just say 55, right click on it, delete a cell and we'll say shift left. That took the unit cost, shifted it left and then the multiplication and shifted it left and broke the multiplication and the sum function isn't picking that up either. So when you move from shifting columns and rows to shifting just cells, you're more likely to break the flow of what's happening in the spreadsheet. All right, so we touched on briefly uh, what these ranges were. Let's talk a little bit more about cell references in this next video and how you can make them extend all the way at the bottom of the spreadsheet if you want, and you can fix them so that they don't move. See you in that next video. Thanks for watching.